one thing I love about this particular exercise. Oh, hi, Lou. You guys can't see him, but he's right here. You know, I even put a seat over there for you. You should go sit down. Have a seat. Okay. Ow, don't bite me. Okay, he wants catnip. <laughs> Good morning everyone and happy Saturday. My name is Callie and this is another weekend of clarinets, cats, and coffee. What do you think of this? My mom got me this. Isn't it cute? I really only have one cat right now, but I don't know. This may be very appropriate at some point in my life. I don't know if you guys have noticed, but right back there is a catnip plant. Guess who absolutely loves the catnip plant. Me. Guess who hates it? Luke. Actually, he doesn't hate it. He just pretends it does not exist. He'll like walk right past it. He'll even sniff it. And like, he doesn't care at all. My mom gave me like, gave me that plant when it was like a little baby. Her cats will literally like roll around in her catnip that is like just growing in her like little garden area, right? But no, Luke doesn't care. He doesn't care. He doesn't want to roll around in it or anything. But you know what kind of catnip he does like? Do you just not like catnip anymore? Maybe the catnip plant has desensitized him. I don't know. Okay, well, I don't want you to eat a ton of it because you're going to throw it up. So that's all you get. Am I mean? I don't know. Anyway, so in today's video, I am going to share with you guys and exercise in thirds. And I've, I've given you guys a lot of like finger exercises, a lot of like repetitive things. And while this is somewhat repetitive, um, it's actually quite challenging because every measure, it jumps back down and you have to like kind of climb your way back up. So, um, and not only that, it has varying articulation. So, um, I'm just gonna give you guys a few tips on mastering this and why things like this are important. Exercises in thirds are very, very important for us clarinet players, right? Because um, the the lifting of two fingers and pressing of one or multiple fingers and pressing down, that can get really like just wildly confusing and, and very difficult with our fingers flying up and down, right? So the first thing you wanna do when you're practicing uh, something like this is, uh, practice it slowly and try your best to keep your fingers close to the keys. The, the, the goal is to travel the smallest distance possible without negatively impacting the tone or the intonation, right? If your fingers are like way too close to the keys, you're gonna sound flat. Um, so you wanna try finding that happy medium where uh, your fingers are lifting off of the keys but not having an impact on your tone or intonation. Uh, so that's the first thing. The next thing is while you're practicing slowly, you also want to make sure that your technique is very even and, uh, and, and very controlled. 
And so on, right? So uh, we don't want to have our fingers accidentally rush from one note to the next. So some of you might actually need to press harder in the keys. Others might need to relax your fingers a little bit more as well. So you kind of have to, again, find that balance, find that happy medium between having a firm grip on the instrument, but not so much that your hands become tense. One of the things I, I really like about this and also hate, right, is the the challenge of slurring everything, playing it all very legato, and then articulating staccato, the last two notes of each phrase. And I find that if, if my air support is really bad, those last two notes of each measure will just sound gross and I'll like tense up and kind of choke up. So uh, my, my best advice for um, achieving a really good sound both through the legato and the staccato is just to make sure you're breathing deeply and relaxing as you exhale. So take in a little more air than you think you need and just relax it out. And imagine whooshing the air through your instrument and all of those things combined, deep breath more than you think you should, relaxing on the exhale, but also whooshing the air through the instrument, it will create everything you need to play with proper air support and a beautiful sound. Another tip is to make sure that the lower register notes have a bit more air than the higher ones as well, because lower notes require a bit more of the instrument, right? So you wanna make sure that the air is really reaching all the way down to the end and going into the space. All right, guys, I'm gonna go ahead and play this for you. I'm gonna try not to take it too super fast, um, a nice comfortable tempo, so most of you can hopefully keep up with me and practice along if you wish. Uh, there is a link below to the PDF where you can download it, um, but I will also have the music up here on the screen. Okay, well, let's go ahead and get started. <laughs> enjoyed playing along with me. Um, if you guys are having a good time practicing this excerpt, be sure to hit record on your phone and share on Clarinets, Cats, and Coffee's Facebook group. It is a closed group. You do have to request membership. Um, my only requirement is that you play clarinet and that you're a nice person because I don't want mean people on my page. So uh, yeah, so head on over to Facebook and we will support each other and, and encourage each other to get better. With that said, I would like to wish you all a wonderful weekend, a good rest of your week, and as always, happy practicing.